walking out of Trump Tower with her dad, Donald, and there was a beggar on the streets of uh, Columbus Circle. And he said, uh, she said, uh, you know, my father turned to me and he said, see that, see that guy? See that guy right there? Like, you know, he's luckier than me because, like, he has more money in the world than I do right now. <laughs> and it's just like you're walking out of your golden tower <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> into a car. <laughs> he's like, that homeless guy, actually, he's the lucky one. <laughs> he's literally just going to walk over to his, like, golden swan collection. <laughs> oh, I'm such a bitch. Fuck me. <laughs> no, he, I mean, that's the thing, though. That is how real estate developer taxes work. I mean, wouldn't you know it, but the entire system is sort of game towards uh rich people leveraging them well their companies hundreds if not thousands of times over and if you look at any big real estate developers taxes it's going to be a similar story of them just losing untold amounts of money that they are not personally liable for yes yeah sometimes because it's like a tax offset you can sort of value things however sometimes and be like oh um you know, uh, this building actually lost three hundred trillion dollars. Uh, I don't know. We ran into a septic line or something, and so it's partly that. If you looked at like Jared's dad's taxes, you looked at like any Chicago developer, L.A., Austin, fucking wherever, you'd find similar things. But also, he fucked up pretty bad. He ate shit a lot, great many number of times. But, it, but there are no consequences for it. Yeah. It didn't mean anything because he was so deep in the hole that there was always somebody there to fucking give him more money. Well, yeah, that's if it. That's I mean, it's the oldest cliche in the book. Oh, somebody if you owe the bank a hundred dollars, you have a problem. And if you owe the bank, you know, a hundred million dollars, they have a problem. Mm -hmm. And that's I mean, <clears throat> it is history repeats itself because isn't that just, you know, him as president? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I honestly, like all the people that thought, oh, you know, I bet this is really embarrassing to Donald Trump. I thought the, be the best take on this and why it won't matter even one whit to any of the people who support him or even the people who are on the fence at all about this. The best take, the Pope of New York Sports Radio, Mike Francesa, pointed it out exactly right. He may have lost all that money. He may have been a bad businessman, but he won the biggest prize of all. He's the president of the United yeah, States. That's true. Done. It's done. We were talking about this. Like, Donald Trump may be the greatest celebrity in human history. No question. As like, a person, the... I agree. Like the best person who is <laughs> no, ever a celebrity, I agree. The best celebrity ever. No one has ever done what he's done with it, Maybe, especially well, considering how meager the, the resume really is. He was, and like he Ronald was, Reagan became president, but he was like a politician before he that. He was two-term yeah. governor, yeah, governor of California, California. Yeah. the governor. biggest fucking state in the union. Yeah, and he was like, you know, successful as an actor. He was in the best movies of the time, the ape movie. People Bed, love Bedtime for Bonzo. Yeah, Bonzo. The movie where he pretended to free Auschwitz. <laughs> After he really did it. Yeah. Newt Rockney, all American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he about about the football player who died of AIDS. Yeah. <laughs> that was it was cool when movies were just like, there's a swell guy who's a football player. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's the plot. Okay. So yeah, I guess like that's the other thing about uh like the, the difference between being rich and wealthy is that like once you pass a certain level, like wealth means that there's nothing you can do. Yep. And there's no action which you could personally undertake. And that will ever make you not rich because you have the connections because somebody else has a vested interest in keeping you, even if it's just as a brand and a face, which is what Trump was for most of his career uh, for for, you know, money laundering and shit and like like uh, like offsets and all that stuff. They would just use him as a pass through and he was useful for that reason. So he was never going to go anywhere, no matter how much of an absolute dope he was. And the funny thing is, like, if, you know, the, the money that his dad gave him was it like 30 million dollars yeah. to start out with. If he had taken that 30 million dollars and put it in like treasury bonds, he yeah. would be wealthier today. Just an index fund or like, something. Yeah. He would be Way more vastly money. more wealthy and successful than he is now. But it wouldn't fucking matter. And he wouldn't be president because yeah. he, like all that losing billions of dollars, it allows him to pretend that he's a fucking Gordon Gecko business shark real yeah, estate that's how he became a brand that deals became guy yeah and that's why guy that why he got hired to be the host and of the that's why apprentice. despite all of the fact that he's actually a really terrible deals guy that's why all of his fans love him is because he plays the role he is of, a TV of an doing asshole deals so he's gonna do the deals i mean if you think about the perfect guy to run america as a business wouldn't it just be like a real estate developer who kind of sucks at it and then just gets into branding? Yeah. Isn't that just America? <laughs> That's the story of America. That Damn. The story of America. <laughs> he's the perfect man. And I mean that in every sense of that term. He's physically? A good person. He looks physically. good. He's a morally good person. A fucking Adonis. I mean, look at it. Like, he gave up 
his businessman lifestyle to, to be, be mocked and jeered yeah, at. That's the best that's Trump That's the meme. best Trump. I love it. Yeah, yeah. He gave all he's, that up. To become the most hated man ever. For us. Yeah. He's, yeah, like, he's, he's like Jesus Christ. Basically. I love that. Just cut cut that to like the, like, Nelly Orr is disgusting. <laughs> what was the one? Was the one you found the other day an old Trump tweet where he was getting mad at a golf course because it was like the greens look terrible. Oh, it's an embarrassment to golf. Oh, well, this shows that he was senile in like 2013 <laughs> because he's just tweeting directly at Golf Magazine, <laughs> Golf Digest, <laughs> yeah, Golf tweeting. Digest, and he's like, "This course is an embarrassment to golf," <laughs> and he doesn't even say what course it is. He's not replying to anything. He's just adding fucking Golf Digest. There are so many. I found so many. I found. Uh, I feel very accomplished because I found the only Trump tweet that mentions Kate Upton. Really? Yeah. It's only one, and it's apropos of nothing. And he goes, "A Victoria's Secret rep was very nasty to Kate Upton, and now she's a big star." <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing before that about her. Nothing um, after. Do you think that was just him shooting his shot? <laughs> like someone, I don't know. Someone did this the other day. Uh, they posted it's it's like an easy thing, but like like you see it and it never doesn't get me. It's a still from like a Fox News or cable news of it's like it, Donald Trump sitting next to Tiger Woods, and the headline says President Donald Trump bestows Presidential Medal of Freedom upon Tiger Woods, <laughs> and someone said. What would like if you could beam that image back to just 2014 and show it to someone? Yeah, like instant like brain death. Instant, instant. Like you would go through the Stargate. Yeah, instantly. instant brain death. You would because that was at the yeah. time Donald Trump was one thing, but at that time Tiger Woods was mainly mainly known as yeah. the disgraced golfer who was just tweeting shit like "I'm gonna fucking come all over your big tits, yep. slut." Yep. The the best Tiger Woods and just getting way off prescription painkillers. You know the best Tiger Woods one was when he texts the woman at like six in the morning do you like golden showers <laughs> <laughs> i'd like to have a threesome with you and a woman you trust it's like the birds are chirping buddy <laughs> but yeah no i mean uh it's shows that futures the wizard is the best album of our time because never st like never stop never give up if you like your wife literally beats your fucking ass with a golf club because you can't stop fucking you're gone off opana <laughs> never stop if everyone knows you as, like, the shitty real estate guy who spent the last two years being, like, Barack Obama failed his midterm project, <laughs> like, never stop. Never stop. Uh, never give up. No one will believe you till the jet's in the sky. Mm -hmm. And it's Jeff's jet. <laughs> uh, okay, here, here's another story of, uh, this is a, this is a character in the Chapo universe that we haven't checked in on in a while. And it, it also speaks to your point about, like, you know, never give up. Never just, give up. Just keep doing you. you there know? are so many chapters like, in American you're, life. You're just going to you're just going to keep you'll just you'll win eventually. Uh, this is about um, a Texas state representative and nemesis of Virgil, Texas. Uh, Jonathan Stickland, also known as based stick. Can we stop? We uh, talked about three hot guys already. <laughs> this is uh, he God. got into a uh, a bit of a, a bit of a row uh, this week um, where he uh, was oh no he screaming spilled his at a soup <laughs> <laughs> spilled his roux. No, he was uh, screaming at a man about um, uh, mandatory vaccinations, and he just wants to let everyone know that like as long as there is you know gravy coursing through his heart, <laughs> uh, you will never ever have to get your kids vaccinated in Texas if you don't want to. And I just found a, a write up of this courtesy of like awesome politics website, Big League Politics. So you know it's good. That's the one that did the 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 Hunter Kelly accusation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Big League Politics. Yeah. It's the, it's it's an offshoot. They're sponsored by Big League Chew. Right, exactly. And it's like it's like you know how Mel magazine is just Dollar Shave Club. Yeah. Big League Politics is the Big League Chew yeah. uh you know media brand that they use to sell their sort of uh fake uh, shredded bubblegum like tobacco product yeah. for little leaguers who yeah. want to pretend like they're in the big leagues hawking a big chaw in their mouth right. but, you know just blow bubbles yeah. and uh, Felix here it's one that of these demographic is huge for Trump okay so this is uh, big league politics Texas rep rips big pharma shill parental rights mean more to us than vaccine sorcery <laughs> It is sourcing. Like, there's no science behind them. No, not like this fucking just wizards. This stupid liberal lab. red bitch came from Volantis all these years ago <laughs> and made us started vaccinating our kids. So it says here, uh, with the relentless push for big pharma to force vaccines into children using government authority, Texas State Rep Jonathan Stickland is making a stand. Stickland took aim at Dr. Peter Hotetz. Dr. Peter Hotep. <laughs> Dr. Peter Hotep. <laughs> Dr. Peter Hotep. Well, now I'm on the side of the doctors. <laughs> Peter Hotez. 
<laughs> uh, a leading advocate for mandatory vaccinations who is pushing for social media entities to restrict non-corporate speech that is skeptical of big pharma shots. We need a more robust system of pro-vaccine advocacy in this country, uh, Hotez said. First of all, I love what they're saying here. Like, I'm sure this guy probably does have some sort of connections to pharmaceutical companies or whatever advocacy group he's going for. Uh, vaccinations are probably one of the least profitable things that pharmaceutical companies produce. Also, how can you be a right winger and have any kind of coherent critique of vaccines on that level of saying, oh, big pharma is making us do this? What? Your whole argument is that, corp is that markets should be unregulated, that companies should be able to get as big as they can, and that they, that they because of the competition of the market, are going to do what's best. And so what are the, why are they, where, where is the room for a critique of this that, that, that makes sense in, the, in, a pro, in, a, in their pro... Because they're pro-family first. They're, what you, it's just if, totally if, incoherent. If you are a parent, you are in charge of everything that goes into your boy. At least the hippy dippy like Marin County dipshits have some sort of vague anti corporate ethos that if, this gets if, absorbed if into. If you want, if you want your boy to be unvaccinated, so that you know he's a bit he's a bit chubby now, but when he starts working on his essentials in high school, he'll do he'll do fundamentals. He'll be an offensive lineman. He's gonna be yeah. a great. He'll be a great natural athlete. Yeah. As soon as he is, but the vaccinations stop that. That's they gonna... stop. They stop the big boy growth. <laughs> yeah, and there'll be no more offensive linemen in the NFL. Well, you think of who owns pharmaceutical companies. Boom. People Who's? who never, well, I was going to say people that never made varsity, but you had to make it explicit. <laughs> uh, and so they they never want anyone to make the play again. Yeah. Right? Like they don't want a white boy to stop a brother on fourth and inches. <laughs> <laughs> and inside every vet, like there is some science in vaccines. Like they do prevent, uh, you know, measles sometimes. Uh, it's arguable. But one thing's for sure they do not let. You know, kids just be built like fridges. We're ready for some football. <laughs> and what they want, they want every kid to play soccer. Yeah. Yes, you know, exactly. Because, okay, if we're more like the EU, we can introduce the Amero. <laughs> and when the Amero is introduced, then you can't revalue the Iraqi dinar. <laughs> and furthermore, yeah, if we become like the EU, there's just going to be fucking minarets everywhere. <laughs> like, the uh -huh. EU has replaced the uh -huh. caliphate. Uh -huh. No, I mean, proof's in the pudding, boys. No, but this is where the conspiracy theory thing comes in. You yeah, know, so that's says, where you uh, fill the spot. Yeah, says, uh, Hotez is lobbying for Texas. Hotez is lobbying for Texas to move in the direction of other more left-leaning states that are eliminating personal belief waivers for vaccines, setting the stage. What for, if that, what if for person, mandatory vaccines? What if your personal belief waiver was just like, I don't really like my kid. <laughs> You just know, want to get rid caught, of him. If they caught a fatal case of something, that kind of could be a relief. Yeah, honestly, like, have you talked to him? <laughs> so it says, uh, my kid, shit. I want a do over. <laughs> my kid. My I kid. Wanna, I want to fucking blow in the cartridge and try again. Yeah, my kid, my kid, he actually pissed himself at a sleepover. He fucking embarrassed himself. <laughs> he sucks. So it says, uh, Hotez is particularly hostile towards individuals of deep religious faith who wish to abstain from big pharma's toxic inoculations. If you look at major religions, I can't think of any mainstream prohibitions against vaccines, maybe some sex or spinoffs, he said. These are important times where religious leaders need to speak out on behalf of vaccines. We need an interface statement on vaccines. It was these comments and others that prompted the liberty-minded legislator Stickland to put the Mengelian physician in his place. <laughs> <laughs> he is exactly he's, he's like, like Mengele. Mengele. Yeah. Exactly. Dude, we know Mengele vaccinated all those twins for measles. Yeah. There was no, no more there's no more twins getting measles in any of uh in all of uh, the third Reich. Mengele hated it. He just hated when kids died. <laughs> so Stickland here says thing. You were bought and paid for by the biggest special interest in politics. Do our state a favor and mind your own business. Parental rights mean more to us than your self-enriching science, in quotation marks. And then he says, uh, he follows up, and then Stickland uh, doubles down even harder, harsher condemnation of the doctor, where he says, make the case for your sorcery to consumers on your own dime. <laughs> like every other business, quit using the heavy hand of government to make your business profitable through mandates and immunity. It's disgusting. There is not a single... Pharmaceutical company that is made profitable by vac yeah, vaccination. That is not where the again. money is. By the way, we'll be coming back again at the end of this episode to uh, pharmaceutical companies and uh, how their profits go to research yeah. for prescription drugs that we all need.